most trying days, I want you to know that I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve you in these challenging times for America. And I'm grateful for this chance to get out of Washington. <laughs> and spend the day uh, in the Lehigh Valley talking with people about this very tough economy. You know, I just came from Allentown Metalworks, where I had a chance to visit with workers there. And they were working hard not just to forge the heavy machinery that makes this country run. In fact, uh, one of their projects is actually related to the rebuilding of the World Trade Center uh, and the Twin Towers down there. And so you could just tell the extraordinary pride that the workers take in this project. But like so many others across America, uh, these workers have also been doing the best they can to stay afloat in a brutal recession that has hit folks like them hardest of all. Now, in the two years since this recession began, too many members of our American family have felt the gut punch of the pink slip. Pink slip. Eight million Americans have lost their jobs. Every one of us know somebody who's been swept up by this storm. Neighbors who've lost their homes or their health care, friends who've used up their savings or put off their retirement, relatives who've downscaled their dreams or dropped them entirely, young people who aren't sure whether they can afford their college education. I've heard these stories from every corner of America, and I see them in the letters that I read every single night. So as we come to the end of this very tough year, uh, I want to do something I haven't had a chance to do uh, that often during my first year in office, and that is to share some modestly encouraging news on our economy. Now today, the Labor Department released its monthly employment survey and reported that the nation lost 11,000 jobs in November, which was about 115,000 fewer than was forecast and is about close to zero from the perspective of our overall economy. The unemployment rate ticked down and stood up. The report also found that we lost about 160,000 fewer jobs over the last two months than we had previously thought. So overall, this is the best jobs report that we've seen since 2007. This is good news, just in time for the season of hope. I, I've got to admit, my, my chief economist, Christy Romer, she got about four hugs uh, when she handed us the report. But I do want to keep this in perspective. We've still got a long way to go. I consider one job lost, one job too many. And as I said, as I said yesterday at a jobs conference in Washington, good trends don't pay the rent. We've got to actually grow jobs and get America back to work as quickly as we can. Now, the journey from here will not be without setbacks or struggles. You know, there may be gyrations in the months ahead. There are going to be some months where the reports are a little better, some months where the reports are worse. But the trend line right now is good. The direction is clear. When you think about how this year began, even before I was sworn in and we were losing 700,000 jobs a month, a month. Today's report's a welcome sign that there are better days in it. In fact, we're losing more than 700,000 jobs a month. And that's roughly, uh, that's roughly half the size of Philadelphia. Each month, our financial system was on the verge of collapse. The economists were warning of the second Great Depression. You remember. So from the moment I was sworn to office, I began taking a number of difficult steps to end this economic crisis. And by the way, can I just say, I didn't take these steps because they were popular or because they were particularly gratifying to me. They weren't. You can be sure that when I was running for this office, things like saving the banks and rescuing auto companies were not on my to-do list. 